All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Lauren here at the National Weather Service in Peachtree City, and welcome to our weekly weather briefing for today, Thursday, September 21st. All right, so what are we going to go through today? So first, fall starts tomorrow. Um, then after, we'll go into looking at our chances for precipitation over the next few days. They'll be mainly diurnal, which is in the afternoon and into the evening, drying out overnight. And then after the next few days, we'll start to dry out. Next, we'll look at our high and low temperatures as they've been slightly above normal and will continue to be that way. Our area is currently dominated by mainly high pressure, so we'll be seeing some warmer and drier conditions. Just a second. Just a second. All right. Also, okay, we have no severe weather con conditions expected over the next few days. Then we'll go into a little update on the tropics, looking at Tropical Storm Jose and Hurricane Maria. Over the next seven days, we don't have much rainfall forecasted, but we'll take a look at that. And then we'll look at the climate outlook for the next week. All right, so current conditions. Um, on the right hand side here, we have a current conditions of a surface analysis right now. Overlaid, we have infrared satellite. Uh, so what you're seeing is clouds and the greens and yellows, and then the background blue is either the ocean or the land. So overall, we have high pressure in place at the surface over our area here. Um, but we do have some moisture in the area, so that'll lead us to having chances for showers and thunderstorms as we go through this afternoon and into the evening, and same for tomorrow. So just taking a broad look at today, Friday, and then Saturday in the upper left corner we have today. Focusing on Georgia, we do have chances for showers and thunderstorms today. That will persist um, for the afternoon and evening hours of Friday as well. And then looking at Saturday, we have less chances for showers and thunderstorms in our area. So let's take a look at a few state graphics. First, we're going to look at the maximum temperatures. So looking at afternoon highs for today. We're mainly in the upper 80s and for some areas 90s for the highs for tomorrow. Pretty much the same, but a few degrees cooler will be in the mid to upper 80s for most areas, a little bit cooler in the mountains. As we continue through the next seven days, this trend will continue closely following um, Friday's highs to upper 80s, but we could see upper 70s in the mountains. Taking a look at our minimum temperatures, so looking at the low temperatures for tomorrow morning on the left-hand side, we're in the 60s up to 70 in some areas of the state, but mainly in the mid to upper 60s, looking at tomorrow morning and then Saturday morning, a couple degrees cooler as well, looking at the mid to upper 60s and cooler in the mountains. And this trend will continue through the rest of the next seven days as well. I just want to add the slide in, taking a look at our September temperatures, and I just chose to take a look at Atlanta. It's kind of in the middle of our area. Um, these blue bars here represent the high and low temperatures over the past uh, days of September. If you see the little brown area in the middle, those are our normal or average highs and lows. So looking at September 21st today and onward, our normal highs are around 78 to 80 degrees, and our normal lows are around 60 to 63 for the rest of September. So as you can see, over the next seven days, we will be slightly above average for both our highs and our low temperatures, as we'll be in the mid-60s for lows, in the mid-80s for highs. If you look back the past few days as well, we actually still have been slightly above normal, especially for those high temperatures, but also for those lows as well. Um, so I just wanted to show this. Um, just to let everyone know, we're still above average and we'll continue that way for the next seven days. Um, fire weather concerns. So we don't have any fire weather concerns over the next three days. Mainly this is due to our lower wind speeds that we're forecasting through the next few days. And our minimum relative humidity values will stay in the 40s and 50s over the next three days. So now we'll take a look at our severe weather outlook. As I mentioned before, we don't have any severe weather concerns over the next few days. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center's graphics on the left-hand side. We are in the general thunder region for the entire area. 
So we do have chances for showers and thunderstorms, but mainly in the afternoon and evening, and those should diminish once we get to nighttime. For any of those thunderstorms or stronger thunderstorms, our primary hazards will be lightning and gusty winds. Taking a look at Friday, our outlook for Friday, pretty much the same as today. We still have those chances for thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. The same hazards will exist, lightning and gusty winds. It is possible to see some heavy rainfall, but we're not expecting widespread coverage, just scattered to isolated thunderstorms. Again, for Friday, we are in the general thunder outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. Moving on to Saturday, we're not outlooked in anything from the Storm Prediction Center, but we have very, very slight chances for showers and thunderstorms, and that would also be in the afternoon and evening, but they're very slight chances. So now let's take a quick look at the tropics. So looking at the five-day tropical weather outlook, that graphic from the National Hurricane Center is located in the center of the screen. Uh, starting in the northern portion of the graphic, we have Tropical Storm Jose. Looking directly to the south, we have Hurricane Maria. And to the right there, that yellow X and yellow hatched area is a 10% chance of formation over the next 48 hours, so not much. Just taking a quick look at Tropical Storm Jose, here is the 8 a.m. track from Tropical Storm Jose from the National Hurricane Center. Um, it is a tropical storm right now with max sustained winds around 60 miles per hour. The movement is fairly stationary, which is why all of the dots are clumped between being a tropical storm and a depression. Tropical Storm Jose should become post-tropical around 36 hours from now, and it's forecasted to dissipate over the next five days after that. Um, so that's what you can see there with that timeline. The yellow area is the wind extent of tropical storm wind, so that is why there is the tropical storm warning there off of the coast. So this is a loop of the infrared satellite that I took from Maria as of 9 a.m. this morning. The red and black colors are the darker, cooler temperatures showing cloud tops, um, and the green and blues are slightly warmer. Uh, Maria is currently located to the northwest of Puerto Rico after making landfall there. Um, and as you can see, Maria has a pretty large eye and is continuing to spin and move to the northwest, north, northwest. Uh, so here's the track for Maria moving to the northwest at around nine miles per hour with max sustained winds around 115 miles per hour right now. Maria is currently a category three hurricane and slight intensification is expected. Uh, within the next 24 hours, but um, to continue to be a Category 3 hurricane. We are not expecting any impacts to our area from Hurricane Maria. I just wanted to show this graphic so everyone could know. Um, plenty of hurricane warnings and tropical storm warnings down in the islands, but Maria is expected to pass east of the Turks and Caicos Islands as well as the Bahamas and then continue on the track after Sunday, potentially becoming a hurricane, then weakening slightly. For those that might want to check out the National Hurricane Center's website, it's down the links at the bottom of the screen right here. You can type that in and go straight to the National Hurricane Center's website. All right, so precipitation outlook. As I mentioned, we do have chances for showers and thunderstorms this afternoon and evening, as well as for Friday. So here's the next 48 hours, a rainfall forecast. For most areas, less than a quarter inch is expected, um, mainly close to a tenth. We're not expecting widespread precipitation, but it would be more isolated or scattered. So um, this is what you could see. So this is for 48 hours. Taking a look at seven days out, it's basically the same as the 48 hours, which is saying that um, we're really not going to get too much after these next couple of days. So most of our precip will be in the next two days and then drying out after that. So a little bit on the drought, we don't really have much. We have no areas in drought, so we will not have any drought issues through the next seven days. Taking a look at the climate outlook for the next six to 10 days, so more than a week out, the top left shows the temperature probabilities of a percentage of being of no, above normal temperatures or either below normal temperatures. So for the next six to 10 days, we're expecting to have 60% above normal temperatures, so a little bit warmer than normal. If you look at the bottom right graphic, this shows the six to 10 day precipitation probabilities, 
for being either above average precipitation or below average precipitation. So here, if you look at our area, we're looking at around 40% chance of being below normal precipitation. So this is where that high pressure in place will lead us to a warming and drying trend. So a little bit of a summary. Um, overall, we have chances for diurnal or afternoon and evening precipitation over the next few days, but we will be drying out after that. So after that, we have minimum rainfall forecasted over the next seven days. High and low temperatures will be slightly above normal as they have been, but that will continue through the next seven days. We aren't expecting any severe weather and we don't have any tropical impacts for our area. So thank you so much for joining us.